uh, I encourage people to go beyond perhaps just what I'm focusing on in order to appreciate just how harmful seed oils can be. My intention in this mini lecture is to just focus on the metabolic aspect with a specific emphasis on insulin resistance. So let's come back to that. Well, there is obviously a trend. As much as nutrition science likes to rely on big global surveys and trends, this one's too obvious to ignore. Insulin resistance has become the common, the most common health disorder worldwide at the same time that refined seed oils have become the most commonly consumed fats. This is an, a remarkable coincidence. And indeed, I, I do think it goes beyond coincidence. I think there is some important connections here. Insulin matters, of course, insulin resistance does so much because not only it's so common, but it contributes to essentially every non-infectious chronic disease, either directly causing it or exacerbating it. So think problems like type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, infertility, and more. Of course, I wrote an entire book on the topic of why insulin resistance is such a problem. But let's come back to linoleic acid. The main culprit in why refined seed oils are, I would say, appropriately vilified. Is linoleic acid itself the culprit or is the things it gives birth to. Those double bonds in that polyunsaturated fat certainly make it unstable. And the more unstable the fat is, the more likely it is to undergo peroxidation. So peroxidation can be this process of manipulating the fat, whether it is in a fryer or in our body, we end up converting the linoleic acid into its production, uh, the peroxidation products, like some of the big ones, 4-H-N-E or 13-H-O-D-E, 13 HODE, and other oxylipins. Those are the main peroxidation products or the little villains that are actually potentially the problem. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's explore the evidence. Now, as I do so, I hope you will appreciate the progression that we're going to take. I want to start with the simplest of biological models that we biomedical scientists use, namely cell cultures. So we're going to look at the evidence in cells. Then we're going to move on to a little bit of animal evidence. Now, the nice thing about both of those models is while they are stepping up in complexity, going from isolated cells to animals is certainly a step up with humans being the most complex, not just because of our biology, but because of our, well, the variety and the complication of perfectly trying to control every in uh, every aspect. Whereas the animal studies, they're all basically identical twins. But as we, with the simpler model comes a little more clarity. All right, well, let's look at that clarity. Firstly, a 2016 molecular metabolism paper by Sasson et al. tested fat cells or adipocytes with unoxidized or what they intended to be just straight linoleic acid. When they did so, there was no effect of insulin resistance. That the fat cells treated with linoleic acid, they had normal insulin signaling. Glucose uptake as measured in the study was perfectly fine. However, when they treated these adipocytes with the, ox with the peroxidation product for HNE, things didn't work out so well. They found that the 4-HNE was compromising a particular protein called the insulin receptor substrate 1, or IRS1. In order for normal insulin, insulin signaling to occur, when insulin binds to its insulin receptor, the most immediate next step is going to be that IRS1 gets phosphorylated or activated. They found that that went down by about 50%. No surprise, there was a reduction in glucose transport. This already, in this one single study, is highlighting an important variable that linoleic acid didn't directly cause the problem, but its peroxidation product did. Similarly, a 2023 study in geroscience by Gutierrez Mariscal et al., they hit visceral fat cells with 4-HNE. Not only did they see some substantial mitochondrial damage, which is extremely relevant, indeed relevant in multiple other disorders that I'm not discussing, perhaps including cancer, but they also found that insulin sensitivity dropped, but linoleic acid alone had no real effect. 
And finally, just to round out some evidence on fat uh, on cells, a 2019 redox biology paper by Zhang et al. saw 4-HNE compromise muscle cell in insulin signaling, this time by inhibiting the activation of a protein called AKT. I just mentioned IRS1. Well, go a few steps down in the insulin signaling pathway, and you get to AKT. AKT is a critical activation point. If it is comprom compromised, insulin signaling is compromised. So in my view, based on these studies and a handful of others from the based with cell culture, used using cell culture, the pattern appears clear. Linoleic acid is kind of neutral in this regard, but its peroxidation products are not. 